So please join me in welcoming to the stage Dr. Brett Jacobson. Thank you. Thank you. All right, again, welcome to uh, Design Thinking Summit uh, 2012. Let me start off the summit by saying this summit is not about making a case for change. It's 2012. Do we really need to make a case for change? Like you, we read the global achievement gap. That used to be us. The creativity crisis, end of the university. Do we need to really make a case for change? Like you, we watched the Finland phenomena, a race to nowhere, two million minutes. Do we really need to make a case for change? Like you, we debated 21st century skills, the Common Core, Khan Academy, and a whole host of uh, TED Talks. Just this month in Harvard Business Review, the title on the cover is about American competitiveness. How business leaders, policymakers, and academics share their thoughts on how to put America back on track. Like you, we're aware of the nation's report card when you look at math and reading and how the United States falls well below many countries uh, throughout the world from China and Korea and Liechtenstein on math. I mean, we, you, we know about our nation's uh, report card. At this point, do we need to really make the case for change? So this summit is not about uh, doing that. Yet, in spite of this, we do not want to be passive victims to the latest trends of the 21st century. Yet, we will not be held hostage by 20th century educational warriors. So we're not looking at the latest trends, but we will not be held hostage by the, by the warriors of the 20th century. Here at Mount Vernon Presbyterian School, we decided that we wanted to stop talking and to start innovating. And so that sort of gave rise to the Mount Vernon Institute uh, for Innovation that you're gonna hear a little bit about today. And we, right now we have three particular pillars, the Center for Design Thinking, the Center for Global Competitiveness, and the Center for Citizen Leadership. And so this Mount Vernon Institute for Innovation is really looking and focusing on the competencies needed to face the challenges of the future including intuitive thinking, cross-cultural competency, transdisciplinary performance task, cognitive load management, virtual teaming, computational thinking, new media literacy, social intelligence, and of course, design thinking. So what has inspired us here at the school? What is our story about design thinking in particular? Well, we are actually inspired by a pink incubator. And I want to talk to you a little bit about this pink incubator. Let me start out with the pink side of it. We all are familiar in this room with a book called A Whole New Mind by Daniel Pink. And he talks about how right-brainers will rule the world. And the six senses that are needed and necessary in order to prepare uh, prepare students or prepare people like yourself for the challenges of the future. Well, there's a particular chapter in this book called Design, and he quotes John Heskett, a design scholar. And I think this has really been impressed upon me and has really inspired us as a school, and it's such a simple formula. And I want you to embed this formula into your being today. And as you walk away from here, I want you to take away this particular uh, formula. And basically, John Heskett said, design is a combination of utility plus significance. Design equals utility plus significance. I think as, in, as, as schools and as organizations, we've got this utility thing down. Because think about what the definition of utility uh, is about. It's about being useful, functional. It serves a purpose. It's satisfactory, it's practical. And as Daniel Pink would talk about, it's about the left hemisphere of the brain, sequential, literal, 
functional, textual, analytic. Left brain attributes, or better yet, left brain teachers wanting left brain results. We've got this utility thing down, but in the 20th, 21st century, is utility enough for our students, for the people that we employ? Is utility enough? And I think what has inspired us is to say that utility is not enough. So no one's asking you to give up utility, but it's not enough. It's plus. It's a higher standard. It's actually more rigorous than utility. And so I want to walk through that uh, uh, a little bit uh, today. So on this utility side, could this not be said? By the way, as far as utility, this chair that's holding you up today, it has utility. It, it serves a purpose. It's, it's useful. It's functional. Now, if you were to listen to us for about five hours, you would say, I don't know about this utility thing. I, it's, it's hurting a little bit. But, uh, but it serves a purpose. It's functional. So could this not be said of the SAT? The brand called college prep schools? Is that, that's heresy uh, to, even, to even say that. But could that not be said of the brand called college prep schools? Advanced placement? So no one's asking us to give up utility. But because it serves a purpose, right? It's functional. It's, it's, uh, uh, it, it works for what we're trying to do, or at least what we feel like we're trying uh, to do. So the question is, if it's utility plus, then what is our long-term strategy? And I think that's where significance uh, comes uh, into play. You see, significance is about meaning. It's about being relevant. It has weight. There's applicability. There's importance. You know, this is, as Pink would say, this is right brain. This is the right hemisphere of the brain. Simultaneous, metaphorical, aesthetic, contextual, synthetic. Right brain attributes wanting right brain uh, results. So design equals utility plus significance. Let me give you a couple of examples. Tracy Dolgan, he is the CEO of Yes Cable Sports. And a couple weeks ago, he appeared in the business section of the New York Times. And I really encourage you to look at that business section. They have a component within it called the corner office. And they interview a leader every single week, and they always get their perspective on leadership. Uh, and it's interesting, nine times out of 10, uh, the greatest leadership example that someone has learned is to be a better listener, uh, which is interesting. But Tracy Dolgan uh, said this, and I thought, wow, it's such an indictment on educational institutions. He said, I have found over time that there is no substitute for experience. There is no magic bullet for experience. There is no substitute. He said, they don't teach it in school. How often have you heard that statement? They don't teach it in school, this experience piece. Well, isn't he hitting on the significance question? I don't think he's touching utility. I think he's really talking about uh, significance. I do not want that to be said of our school, that as our students walk away, people say, these are great kids, and they work hard, and they can execute whatever you give them, but uh, they just don't teach that in school. They don't teach that there. I don't want that to be said of our school. I want utility plus. I want utility plus uh, significance. And I think that's obviously part of why you're here. You want to provide that level of significance uh, for your uh, students. Pat Bassett, the president of the National Association of Independent Schools in the most recent Independent School Magazine, I think is also asking the significance question. He asked, how aggressive a role do schools have in embedding the shifts the country and the world need? How agile are we? How adaptable um, are we? Because we've got the utility thing down, but we need to, to look at its significance. And this is a significance uh, question. In your welcome back today, you received a magazine from Fast Company. Um, and it's the world's most 50 innovative companies. And whole, I mean, unbelievable, an educational institution appeared on the top, in the top 50. 
and it just so happens it's Southern New Hampshire uh, University. They have become the largest online provider in New England. And in 2014, they hope to be the largest online nonprofit educational system. You see, they are asking the significance question. They are busy questioning the shape of its future. The president of Southern New Hampshire says, we want to create the business model that blows up our current model because if we don't, someone else will. They are asking the significance question within their organization. So what I want you to do today is I want you to filter your mission statement at your school or at your company or organization through this formula. Think about that. Filter your mission statement through this. The, uh, there's a tweet I, uh, I retweeted a couple weeks ago, and it said, how often when you're trying, when you have a debate going on in your organization and you have a debate going on in your school philosophically, how often do you say, how often do you invoke the mission statement and to settle that debate? I mean, that never happens. But we, we, we should, that should happen because it's about utility plus uh, significance. Because there is good design and there is bad design. And so I want you to filter your mission statement of your school through this formula. I also want you to filter your classroom practice through this formula. Because your classroom practice has good design and, it, and you have bad design. And that's part of one of our norms today, by the way, is fail up. So just because from time to time you're going to have bad design, uh, it is about modeling that for, for students to fail up. I want you to filter your colleagues through this formula at your school, at your organization, at your company. I want you to filter your division if you represent elementary school, if you represent a high school, whatever the case may be. You filter that entity through this particular formula. Design equals utility plus significance. The other side of this that I want to talk about is this pink incubator. What inspired us? Three years ago, I attended a workshop at the National Association of Independent Schools uh, conference. And I heard from two individuals talk about design thinking. One from the Stanford D School, the Institute of Design, and uh, someone that's actually here today that will speak to you, Kim Sachs. I haven't told that to you, Kim. But uh, when, you came, when you spoke three years ago, um, I was so impressed by the process. But really, at the end of the day, <laughs> they ended their presentation with the heart, they pull into the heartstrings. And I walked out of that and I said, we're going to do that at Mount Vernon. And four Stanford D School students were presented with a design thinking challenge. And by the way, these four students were not from the same area of discipline. But they were able to use their uh, experience, whether that was engineering or math or whatever the case may be, they were able to come together, this interdisciplinary uh, sort of design challenge, and was able to come up with an idea to really impact the world and save lives. And so now they've developed an organization called uh, Embrace Global. And I want to show you a brief clip uh, of this. As I watch my child sleep, I feel a sense of inner peace. I will do everything to protect him. And I want to always be there to give him unconditional love. Every day, he teaches me something new. And together, we share many special moments. But the day my child was born, the only thing I wanted was to help her live. problems these babies face is staying warm. This is the primary function of an incubator, but traditional incubators cost thousands of dollars and require electricity. Parents in rural areas resort to desperate measures to care for their babies, including tying hot water bottles around the babies, placing them under light bulbs, or holding them over hot coals. 
The Embrace Infant Warmer is a simple solution to this problem. Embrace consists of three parts, a sleeping bag, a heater, and a pouch of phase change material. Once heated, the phase change material is placed into a compartment in the sleeping bag and can maintain a constant temperature of 37 degrees Celsius or 98 degrees Fahrenheit over the next four to six hours. The product stays warm without electricity. It is safe and intuitive to use, easy to clean, portable, and allows close mother-to-child interaction. Embrace's mission is to give every infant a chance for a healthy life. Every child deserves the opportunity to live, to grow, to dream. I don't know about you, but I want to be a part of that. Uh, and I think in order to be a part of that and impact the world, it has to be utility plus significance. It has to be about significance. It has to be relevant. It has to have weight. There has to be importance to what we're doing. Utility alone is gonna do, will not uh, do this for our students, uh, for people that work in our company uh, in order to add value. We must, we must, if we want to be a part of impacting the world, I, I think this is something that we really wanna focus on uh, that you would want to focus on within your organization. And so we're going to take you through the process today and from a 101 standpoint and really give you the basics and really just beat those basics uh, uh, into you and, and provide a number of demonstrations of how that has taken place uh, here at the school along with the experts uh, that we have here today and then your participation uh, in the summit uh, this afternoon in the, in the challenge. But some of the challenges that, we have many challenges that have taken place over the uh, last uh, two to three years. These are just uh, some of those ranging from a, a 21st century classroom, which was actually the inspiration of our iDesign lab. Uh, that was a precursor to actually opening it. We asked a group of uh, fifth graders uh, to develop this uh, 21st century classroom. And so we use that as a prototype uh, for our iDesign lab today. And then it goes down to, um, I mean, uh, uh, kindergartners. I don't know, a ginger man trap, I don't know if that sounds glamorous or exciting, but there's an engineering concept in which kindergartners utilize uh, uh, this process in order to develop that. Developmentally, it makes a big difference, and it's so engaging and so motivating uh, for students. A couple of my favorites is a cemetery restoration project. There's a cemetery that sits right over here in our, uh, by our campus, and our students went through the process in our upper school of, of, of deep design that you're gonna hear about today. And uh, essentially, there were no records of any one of those, uh, those that had been buried uh, over in the cemetery. And it's interesting, the oldest is a Civil War vet, the most recent is a World War II vet, and over 50% of the plots are of children under the age of two. And our students obviously internalize that because they begin to discover and uncover uh, this information in the deep design process. One of my favorites is the uh, raincoat, uh, and you're gonna hear a little bit about that, where our second graders designed a durable, sustainable raincoat out of used uh, candy wrappers in order to help and assist students in Zambia, we have a sister school in Zambia, and they wanted to sort of understand and empathize with them about their particular experience. And they led the way in this process. So this is covering from, from lower school all the way through, uh, through our upper school. And these are some of the challenges that our students have participated in, not adult-driven, but student-led. And at the end of the day, they are producing. They're taking utility and all the components, that, that all the objectives, the student will be able to sort of concepts, and they're actually having them uh, produce. So it is our privilege and our honor to have you here today and to go through this particular process. And, and, and as much as we will uh, as you learn from us, we will learn from you, and we hope that this pink incubator inspires you to change the world. Thank you. <laughs>